It is day two, <laughs> right in the middle. <laughs> Felt a lot like day one. <laughs> What's new from yesterday? We continue to have discussions. Um, yeah, and clearly the industry, there's not a whole lot of transactional activity going on uh, uh, altogether, but we continue to have discussions. I do think we're making progress in certain areas, which is, which is good. Um, and I also know that progress on, on whether it's trade transactions or free agent acquisitions, it's not linear. You, you, it's generally, um, you may take two steps forward or step back, but uh, I do think we're making some progress. Well, why do you think it has been so slow, not just for, for you guys transactionally, but across the sport? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I think one reason is um, yeah, the, the top of the markets on both the position player and pitcher sides haven't moved yet, and, and sometimes we've seen in past free agent periods where uh, where real transaction volume doesn't occur until the top of the markets move. I don't think that explains everything, um, but but that's, that could be a factor. How does that affect how you guys do this? Do you try and maybe, I don't know, look and look in other places for something that might materialize, well, or is it important to stick to a plan? I, I, what I'll say is, like, I, the good news for us is we've got three months left of an off-season, so um, it's not as though the off-season ends at the end of the winter meeting. So we, we've got plenty of time. Uh, you know, our, our targets remain our targets, our processes remain our processes, and, and we'll continue to follow that. David, what are some of like the in- intricate challenges or things that you have to kind of consider when you're evaluating like this international talent in this market, given the fact that like your front office to you features like a lot of relatively new faces as well? Sure, I, I don't think that's unique to the international market. I think I think it's it's part of coming to a new organization um, where the information is going to be a little bit different. The the people with whom I'm working on, on you know, very closely on a daily basis. Um, we're all still getting to know each other. So that, that is part of uh, coming to a new organization. It's, it's frankly part of the excitement of coming to a new organization where you're exposed to some new ideas, new ways of thinking, um, and newer information streams. I know yesterday you said you need one pitcher. Do you view that pitcher? Do you need a top-end starter to feel like you, you, you've had a successful offseason at this point? So I don't, I don't necessarily think we're... we're setting any definitive number of pitchers we need or, or anything like that. And I, and I don't necessarily think um, that it has to be the frontline guy. Uh, I've talked about this before. It is wonderful to have horses at the top of your rotation. Um, it certainly makes uh, constructing the rest of the staff maybe a little bit easier. But it's not the only way to construct a, a pitching staff. Um, I do think uh, you can put together a very competitive and solid pitching staff um, in a variety of different ways. You use the word horses, that's kind of like an innings eater uh, connotation, I guess. Are those guys even more valuable now that there are fewer of them in the sport? I think uh, those guys are important. One, there, there probably are fewer of them. Two, um, we're, we're now limited on the number of pitchers we can have on a staff, and that's that's obviously a couple years old now. Um, but that is that has changed the way... Uh, probably that we look at a segment of a starting pitching market that can gobble up innings. Where do you think DJ Stewart fits in with this? Team? Well, I think DJ demonstrated uh, over the last couple of months last year that, that he can hit, right? And that's something that's important to us. Um, the lefty bat is important to us. Um, you know, he's a bat first player. And so where exactly that fits will be dependent on uh, how the rest of, of the offseason shapes out and how the roster shakes out. Uh, but I think it was very encouraging what we saw over the last couple months of the season. A guy like that, I mean, do you, I mean, obviously you, you put a lot of stock in those last two months of tender him a contract, but do you still, do you, what do you wonder about him? Well, any time you have a player who um, didn't have immediate success at the major league level or consistent immediate success um, like DJ, uh, when they do have that period of success, you want to see them continue it. Um, and you want to see that level of consistency. So the conviction um, uh, of evaluation, the con- conviction of, of whether he can do it going forward is just going to grow the more he does it at the major league level. David, given uh, what you said about top flight pitchers, in, in the mar- are there multiple of those in this market that you think fit your team or could fit your team? Uh, I think that remains to be seen. I, I, I think um, at, at the top end there, there's clearly um, a great deal of talent. Um, I think it kind of remains to be seen um, at, at the, the very top end where that heads. Uh, we know we need to add to our starting pitching. Um, I'm confident we'll be able to do that. 
uh, probably a little bit too early for me to predict exactly what echelon it is. The, the bullpen did not have a lot of velocity last year, especially with Diaz out. You, ha you get him back, but is there a, a desire to add specifically that component to the, the reliever core? I think there's a desire to have a diversity of looks and stuff out of out of our out of our relievers. Um, uh, velocity is a part of that. Um, velocity is not the entire package there. So, yeah, I'd like to have um, a couple of guys who can uh, really bring it out of the pen. I'd also have, uh, I'd, ha I'd like to have some different looks. Um, and there are there are plenty of guys throwing in the high 80s that are are doing a good job out of bullpens these days. Do you foresee like the value of like having somebody who could maybe provide some bulk innings and relief that kind of like yeah. swing job? I I, I think so. Um, I think when you can. Uh, have someone who can consistently give you multiple innings out of the pen or step in for a spot start, uh, it does take some pressure off the rest of the staff. And so um, I, I would imagine that's something we'll seek to have on our roster at various points of the season. Would you be comfortable using one of your younger starters already in-house in one of those roles? Maybe. That, that's not, not something we've discussed a ton to this point. I think it will depend upon how our off-season activity goes. Um, and then ultimately what the team, how the composition of the tree, team builds during spring training. McGill for years has been kind of bandied about as a potential reliever. He's exclusively started. How do you view him in this whole picture? I think it's a really big arm, and I'd like to continue exploring him as a starter. Why as a starter? Because starting pitching is really tough to find. <laughs> um, and, and I think this guy has a chance to do it. Uh, and he's demonstrated for various... Um, portions of his career that he can do it, and so we'd like to continue exploring it. How do you evaluate the market at KBO as a, market, as a market? So I think international markets in general, we just have so much more uh, information today um, than we did 10 years ago, where we're, we're able to make um, hopefully more educated evaluations um, on players coming over and, and which players um, may or may not have success over here. But all, all, any international market, certainly including the KBO, is a, is a very valuable place to look for talent. Anytime you are um, trying to evaluate a player in a different environment, whether that's AAA, AA, the KBO, MPB, Mexico, um, anywhere, um, you're, you're gonna have less predictive reliability than if you're just evaluating major league to major league. Um, and that's for a variety of, of sources, a variety of reasons. Um, but every year, I think we get a little bit better in some of these international markets. So it's, we're still not going to be able to predict performance um, with the same reliability as we would uh, for a major league player. Um, I'm not sure we ever will, um, but, but we're, getting, we're getting a little bit better each year.